Oh, hi. Just in time for the new episode of Scientix TV. It's beautiful out here. I'm so happy we're shooting this episode outside. Now I have a question for you. When was the last time you took your students out to nature? We hope to inspire you with this episode. Today, we're going to be talking about environmental education. We're going to be talking to a representative from Train Technologies, one of the coordinators of the Cool Schools project, and a teacher from Italy who was one of the teachers that was part of the MBS pilot project. Now, shall we start? Okay. That's Frances Baro. He's the deputy coordinator of School Schools. Hey, Francesc. Hello, Agata. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. And you? It's a great environment to meet. Yeah, it's a great park here. Yeah. Uh, you're actually working on bringing green spaces to schools, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I uh, work uh, in a project that is called Cool Schools, and we try to study uh, how schools are incorporating what we call nature-based solutions and, uh, in, in the school environments and uh, the school yards. W walk with me. So, yes. so you're, what's the benefit of actually bringing those green spaces to schools? Well, there are many benefits actually, and uh, there is uh, increasing uh, evidence uh, from scientific studies about the, the benefits of uh, bringing nature into school environments. And basically, that's, there is a clear positive uh, benefit in terms of uh, general well-being for children and uh, teenagers, and especially also for mental health, uh, for example. There are studies saying that uh, more contact with nature is good for reducing stress levels of children and, and teenagers. Uh, there are studies uh, showing that uh, it can even uh, improve uh, behavioral and cognitive development. Um, yeah, and uh, there are also many uh, benefits in terms of, uh, of the, let's say, um, emotional well-being as well. Nice. Well, what kind of activities can you do then in the school? Yeah, when you transform a schoolyard into a, into a naturalized schoolyard, for example, or a green schoolyard, you basically change a bit uh, how, uh, how, how children play. And uh, there is more interaction between them, especially we, we saw some uh, gender benefits as well. There are some studies showing some gender benefits in the sense that there is more interaction with, between the boys and girls. Because normally in traditional schoolyards, you have the sport fields. Uh, where are basically used by, by boys and, and girls normally are more on the on the sides of the of the of the court or the, the sport field. Uh, so the, basically the, the transformation of the schoolyards into more natural spaces or green spaces, they, they change these dynamics and uh, they improve uh, basically they diversify the, the play options of children and they uh, tr basically strengthen the, the relationships between them. Nice, but, but what happens if you're in, for example, in a city or you don't have a school that actually has a big like playground? What do you do then? Yeah, well, that uh, that's happens in many, in many schools which are maybe located in, uh, in compact and dense neighborhoods uh, with, uh, um, yeah, and with small schoolyards. But that's also the focus of our project because uh, what is important is that schools, if, even if they have a small schoolyards, uh, they can also have access, for example, to public green spaces nearby, to parks, so they can use these parks uh, like this one, for example, as uh, outdoor uh, learning environments. Uh, and also what is important and we want to study is also uh, to what extent schools have equal opportunities and resources to, to organize, for example, visits to parks like this one, to natural areas outside the cities, or to organize camps in nature. Uh, so we want, we want to also see that and to what extent these schools with less green space, for example, in, this, in the schoolyard can also have these kind of opportunities. It's going to be fun to see all those schools becoming cool schools then. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> well, I have to go now, but uh, thank you very much for this time. Thank you uh, for joining us. It's actually interesting that it's not only schools that need to be do doing this work, you actually need industry as well. So what we're going to be doing now is connecting back with our studio where Ivana Kovac, the coordinator of the STEM Alliance, is going to talk to Train Technologies. Oh, bye, Francesc! Thank you, Agata. And it's my pleasure to welcome today Deidre Parrish-Williams, a global corporate citizenship leader, leader from Train Technologies. Train Technologies is one of the major players in cooling and heating industry with tens of thousands of employees. Deidre, why is sustainability so important to your company? Well, hello, and thanks for having me. Um, there are so many reasons. Um, 
start with the fact that communities and corporations everywhere in the world are inextricably linked to one another, both relying on the other for vital resources. So it's in our best interest to keep the communities where we draw resources strong. But much bigger than that is that we understand the criticality of climate change. And as a climate innovation company, we're aware that our industry has contributed to some of the problems our environment faces today. So it's critical for us to take bold leadership in helping to evolve, to solve the climate crisis. That's why almost 10 years ago, before it was on trend, we made sustainability a primary driver across our business. We established the first science-based climate commitments and in 2018, we exceeded them two years early. This year, we strengthened those commitments with a new goal to reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions across our entire value chain by 2050. These, are, these, these commitments are core to who we are because we know that we can't thrive without a healthy planet. Thank you. And I believe that you also support STEM education with your Sustainable Futures program. And can you tell us more about that? We do, sure. So when you think about who we are as a climate innovation company, we're a company that relies heavily on science, engineering, technology, math, all of that uh, space. So it makes sense for us when we think about how we can be of benefit to the community and how we can create uplift. It makes sense for us to think about those core resources and how we can deploy them in ways that are beneficial to our communities. We know that there are lots of folks that don't have access to STEM education and as a consequence, don't have as much access as they should to STEM careers. And we wanna help solve for that. So our strategy, Sustainable Futures, is all about us leveraging our natural assets, our talent, our time, our expertise to help support education for marginalized students, typically black and brown students and girls and we want to help excite them and introduce them to this space, sustainability, uh, green technology, and uh, STEM in general, and hopefully excite them enough that they'll be interested in careers down the road. And recently, Scientix organized a networking seminar. And during that seminar, a trained technologies representative said that one of the goals of the educational program is to improve perception of manufacturing and engineering and technical careers. What is that perception currently and why does it need to be improved, Yedra? Yeah, I think there are a few mis misnomers about our industry. Um, one is that people tend to think about car the careers in our industry in terms of the technicians they may see, you know, the people who install and service HVAC and refrigeration systems. And those are vitally important careers. Um, they're also rewarding and good paying careers and we need technicians in a big way. But they don't see that there are uh, creative opportunities, opportunities for innovation. And we wanna make sure that people understand that there are a broad range of careers. The other one, another misnomer about the industry is that it is um, an industry by and for men. Um, there is great need for the talent, the perspective, the sensibilities that women uniquely bring. And we want to make sure that we work to, to change that, that people understand that there are a wide range of really dynamic and interesting careers and that they're available, accessible, and that we want all people from, from all walks of life. And where is the greatest demand in future job markets when it comes to sustainability? You know, that's a tough thing. Um, we're a very uh, big dynamic organization. We have our commercial commercial HVAC business, res residential HVAC, and then our Thermo King business. And each of them has a little different need. Certainly there's a need for technicians, but I would say to people, particularly um, uh, educators or people who have influence uh, with young people, I would say to them, that um, you should encourage young people to consider careers in this industry because they are challenging, they're dynamic, they're good paying. But in addition to that, they provide an opportunity for you to actively and meaningfully participate in making this planet healthier. 
climate innovation solutions are, are really going to significantly impact the health of our planet in years to come. And we need creative thinkers, innovators, people who can help us reimagine our processes and our technologies so that we can del deliver even more success on our sustainability goals. Because in the end, that helps us to uh, make sure that we have a healthy planet. Could not agree more. Thanks a lot for being our guest today, Deidre, and back to you, Agada. Thank you very much, Ivana and Train Technologies, for joining today's Scientix TV episode. Isidora! Hey, what are you doing? Hi, Agata. Um, I was testing nature-based solutions. How are you doing it? I was, take, I was taking temperatures on the pavement and here, under the trees, and comparing them. And is there much of a difference? Well, no, not really today. But during the summer, I asked our colleagues and teachers to take measurements wherever they went. And look what they found. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it seems like it's much cooler in the shades, right? But do you know why this happens? It's actually because trees and the different plants around the woods, they take in the heat from the sun. And also the water from the soil and the leaves evaporates and cools the air. This is a very easy and cool experience you can do with your students. You can ask them, just take a thermometer and take different measurements around the city, analyze it and present what they found. This way, we can actually show them different concepts of urban planning and how crucial are green patches for combating climate change. Oh, that's really cool. I'm gonna go take more measurements. Bye. I don't think she's coming back to the office anytime soon. I don't feel like going back to the office either. So we're gonna do the last interview from here, from the forest. We have on the line Tulia, Tulia Ursic. She's one of the teachers part of the MBS pilot project, which was coordinated by PPMI and European Schoolnet. Tulia, thank you for joining us today. How's the beginning of the year going? I'm fine, thank you, Agueda. Uh, it was everything nice, uh, at least because we are at school and we can uh, have uh, work in the lab, uh, have normal lessons uh, and uh, cross fingers that we can uh, also explore new things. Tulia, why is it important for teachers to learn about MBS and use it in classroom? And what kind of skills and competences do students develop when the teachers use them? So I think that the MBS, speaking about nature-based solutions, uh, is very important uh, uh, in any moment because uh, uh, we need to understand uh, how to, uh, to use less resources, how to be uh, uh, more sustainable with the environment, uh, and also uh, how to, um, let's say, uh, not be too much invasive uh, uh, with the ecosystem. But uh, I can say also that uh, uh, natural-based solutions are, are part of the everyday uh, life, uh, and uh, we can integrate uh, the normal curriculum uh, very easily uh, in uh, natural-based solutions. Uh, uh, we can speak about biology, we can speak about uh, chemistry, uh, agriculture, engineering as well uh, with the data login. So I think that uh, is very important to understand how we can uh, uh, live more sustainable and uh, uh, use uh, less resources, uh, protect the environment uh, and uh, um, uh, don't use too much energy. And in this period it is uh, uh, very, very important to do that. So, so what's your advice for teachers that want to use MBS inside or outside the classroom? And any examples that you want to share? Uh, yes, I think that uh, uh, natural-based solution, starting uh, from the beginning, I suggest uh, to explore uh, the uh, Scientix uh, website uh, with uh, uh, the resources already prepared by uh, other teachers. Uh, also, the OPLA website is great. Uh, there are a lot of uh, examples and also videos that we can uh, you can use uh, to explore that and also uh, a lot of ideas uh, uh, even if you are not inside the classroom but you wanted to work uh, outside uh, uh, go in the forest or go in uh, in the field look uh, uh, at the river and uh, uh, also in a garden in the city so i think that the main example you can start from there and uh, absolutely i suggest all the colleagues uh, to to start with uh, is something that uh, uh, is uh, uh, very sustainable and very easy to, to adopt. 
Oh yeah, Opla is definitely a very good place to find resources on MBS and Network Nature also has quite very good resources uh, as well. Now, thank you very much Tulia for joining us today and for sharing your experiences. Thank you very much, Agatha. I want to say also that my students uh, uh, enjoyed a lot uh, working uh, uh, with the nature-based solutions. Uh, some of them even dig some holes in the garden trying to <laughs> to uh, uh, turn in competencies of what they have learned. So I would say that is not just uh, having some lessons, but living in a different way. And I think that is uh, what we have to teach uh, and to uh, learn uh, with our students. The good news is that teachers and students across Europe will be able to learn about nature-based solutions soon. We just part started a new project, MBS Edu World where European Schoolnet, with 15 other partners, is going to be bringing MBS everywhere. We have MBS practitioners, industry, researchers, we have other teachers, educational stakeholders, we even have performing artists and football associations. The very first things happening, we have the MBS Edu World MOOC starting in February 2023, where teachers will be able to learn about MBS and how to talk about the topic in the classroom. And that's it. We all want to say thank you very much for watching the Scientix TV episode. Please don't forget to comment on YouTube and other social media channels using the hashtag Scientix TV. Congratulations to the winners of last month's episode. And I think it's time to go back to the office. Thank you and goodbye. And don't forget, the 4th Scientix International Conference is coming in November with lots of interesting speakers. Register now at the URL shown on your screen.